Welcome back to another video and this video is actually going to be slightly different than my normal videos because in this video we're actually going to try to build something. We're going to build a, a, a sort of maker of mandalas or mandalas or, or we're going to use JavaScript, we're going to use functional programming, functional programming style of JavaScript and we're going to use the canvas APIs of, of the web, so a web browser and we're going to allow the users to draw uh, mandalas again or maybe they're called mandalas, you know these sort of uh, 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 I guess religious sort of symmetrical uh, images and I guess it's probably just easier that I'm showing you and, and I haven't built this application that I'm showing you right now but I'm gonna explain that in a moment right but but this is sort of uh, one way of thinking about a, a mandala or a ma mandala or right it's like I mean uh, apologies if I'm getting the pronunciation incorrectly I, I don't mean any disrespect in any way so uh, you, as you can see here right they're using canvas or the person person who wrote this uh, uh, Cold uh, is using canvas, uh, and then you can you can draw on this canvas. But as I draw a single line, that that single line is sort of duplicated, uh, so that I'm actually drawing eight lines. That's correct, right? Like so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So we're drawing eight lines, and and of course then you can actually use this to create pretty cool patterns, right? Sort of trivially as a user, you can you can very easily create these pretty pretty nice looking patterns. Anyways. Um, regardless of the utility of this application, I just th thought that that's, that just sounds like an interesting challenge. And I guess immediately I just thought about, mm, okay, well, actually it's like the seven other points except the first one are sort of uh, derived from the first one. I mean, that's sort of in the specification of this idea. But, but then that just sort of feels like a problem which is very um, suitable for functional programming. So I thought, hey, let's just try and do this in functional programming and see if we can sort of dense the code down. So let me pay my respects, right? So, so this is a blog post. It's a blog post by someone called... Uh, where's the name? Ah, Hagar Shilo. Uh, apologies to you if I'm pronouncing your, your name incorrectly. And it's called The Art of Mathematics, a Mandala Maker Tutorial. So I'm putting the link to this tutorial in, this, in, in the description. And just for a bit of context, a friend actually sent me this the other day. And it, it's part of this uh, uh, site 24ways.org. <laughs> and they're saying 24 ways to impress your friends using programming then, I guess. And then every day up until Christmas, they're posting these uh, sort of, uh, I guess, tutorials, right, of things you can do using using programming. So so this uh, Art of Mathematics, a Mandela Maker tutorial was part of this uh, of, the, of this series. And so, so yeah, I have, I've sort of skimmed through this, um, uh, this, uh, this tutorial, but it seems very good. So if you think that what I'm saying is sort of, like as you're watching through this video, if, uh, video, if you're like, well, why is he making it so complicated? Let me just like, just give me a more s simple code, right? Then maybe you should uh, definitely have a look at, at this tutorial. Sorry, I was not trying to imply that this, uh, this person's solution is in any way more simple. It's, uh, I'm just saying, uh, pedagogically, if you disagree with my pedagogics, then maybe maybe try this out, right? Um, and and uh, again, like uh, she's bringing up some interesting points. So so she brought up the two points. Let me try to remember. It's uh, uh, re re no, actually, she she brought up the idea of reflection, right? So reflecting a point over a uh, a line or an axis. Maybe I should start in this end. Let me just let me just show you this. And actually, let me just again for context. Let me say this. What we're, what we're gonna try to do? Whoops. Let me actually grab a hold of this scrolling wheel. What is going on? Um, so this is the last one, right? So so if you think about what what happens here, right? We're drawing eight lines as I'm drawing a single line. So we're making sort of seven derived lines from from this one first line and if you think about a line a line you can think about as just uh i mean a line is uh, the thing that that sort of takes you from one point to another point and as we're drawing i don't know how these sort of canvas apis work but i'm just like i'm just guessing that what happens is that we get a series of coordinates that the that the mouse position is currently at so you can think about that as that well you just have a series of points so all we actually have to do is that we have to figure out what the seven derived points are from the original one point so like as i'm drawing this one point right or, or the, this one series of points for all of these points that i'm drawing we just have to say well okay we need first this other reflected point and then this other reflected point and then this other reflected point and so forth so like the only i mean the difficult portion quotation marks difficult of the, of this uh, problem i seem I, I i would think is just to figure that out and i think that might actually be pretty 
um, I, I was going to say elegant, but rather uh, we, we should probably be able to solve that in a fairly readable manner by using functional programming. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Let's we'll see. I haven't really planned this. The only thing I planned <laughs> for this, we'll see if I fail spectacularly, is, is just that I, I drew this picture, right? Let me just let me just try and see if this is actually in frame. Uh, if I yeah, if I hold it like this, you can see. Well, actually, I should move this closer. But then I can't see. No, that makes no sense. I have to hold it here. Sorry, guys, if you can't see. So uh, just I, I, I've drawn this chord and drawn this chord in the system here, right? And just think about the picture that you're seeing on screen, and then just think about this chord in the system. In some sense, every point is then just reflected like this. Like if I draw this uh, upper rightmost point, or not upper rightmost, yeah, but the top point in the in the sort of upper right. Uh, portion of this uh, coordinate system. Clearly, you, you can see that I don't know enough maths for this, but let's let's keep going, right? And let's say that that's at at position one three, right? X one and Y three. Then all we have to do is we have to derive these other points. And these other points, if you think about this one, or I should say, all of these other points are based on the numbers three and one. If you look at it, right? This so the original point is one three, but then this point is three one. And this point is 3, negative 1. This point is 1, negative 3. This point is negative 1, negative 3. This point is negative 3, negative 1. This point is negative 1, uh, sorry, negative 3, 1. And this point is negative 1, 3. Right? So, so it's, very, it's very obvious that we, uh, we just need, uh, we need very few concepts like mathematically to solve this and the rest of the stuff is just drawing in the in the canvas but I, I, so, so I'm just thinking instead of starting in the drawing in the canvas end let's just solve this problem so that we're sort of uh, solving the the let's say business logic end of the problem uh, elegantly quotation marks or like uh, in an isolated fashion so that we can then take this isolated code and plug it somehow plug it into uh, into the canvas I think that's sort of generally a good way of approaching things like try to solve the business case first and then try to plug it into whatever delivery mechanism you have whether that's the web or like that's uh, some I mean desktop application who writes desktop applications um, maybe we I mean sorry of course we do write desktop applications um, and, and so forth right so sorry I have, to, I have to let the cat in again I wish I could keep this diagram up but but please think about this uh, or let the cat out Th think about this diagram and, and think about how, how you would uh, go about implementing these things Okay, uh, so if you paused and, and went back to the numbers, I, I guess you could probably see that it's actually, like it's actually pretty trivial to sort of hard code uh, these transformations. Uh, because there, I mean, there are seven of them and you could hard code these seven transformations. I think what we're gonna do instead, because it's more interesting, is, is we're gonna try to build these up from primitives. So um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm using incorrect terminology here, but I think what we need is that we need the two concepts uh, reflection and inverse, the inverse function. So reflection I got from this uh, blog post somewhere here, let me just search for it, reflect, uh, no, hang on, uh, I think it's called reflect, mamma mia, okay, let's just find it, hang on, one moment, draw eight lines, du -du 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 -du. two lines, Goes line here. Ref oh, sorry, I, I searched for, but what did I search for? Ref, I don't know. Anyways, it, it is here, reflecting a point, right? And if we click that link that she's linking to, then you can see we get onto this page that talks about how to reflect points in mathematics. And essentially, that's, that's one of the concepts that we need, right? It's like, if you reflect over the x-axis, then when you have the point 2, 3, you would then get the point to negative three. So if you have a, a point that's, so let me take the diagram here. If you have this point, whoops, if you have this point, then by, by reflecting over the x-axis, you would get this point, right? And by reflecting over the y-axis, if you have this point, you would get this point, 
right? And hopefully from that, you can start to see how we're sort of, well, that's actually, like we need reflection, but then we need one more thing because we also want this point. And I think, please correct me if I'm wrong in the, in the comments, right? But I think what we need is that we need to identify the inverse function from a function and then um, uh, run uh, our, so let me, what I mean is that if you, uh, the, the, the point one three can be thought of as the function where uh, the the value one generates the 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 output or the input one generates the output three right that's the function we're talking about where x is one then y must be three and the inverse function would be the function that uh, when when you have uh, three you then get one and that's what we are talking about here right that's the inverse function it's like if you have three then you get one back. And so I think we also need that. And maybe I'm wrong in that that's called an, in the inverse function, but I think that's that's it, right? And of course, we're not going to implement it in a, in a strange way. It's very trivial, right? It's like it's just flipping. It's like it's taking the x coordinate and placing it in the y position and the y coordinate and placing it in the x position. And if you think about it, right, we take the point 1, 3 and we turn it into the point 3, 1, right? We're just flipping them. Same thing with all of these, right? If you think about uh, uh, the, 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 the things that are sort of in one of these quadrants. So negative one and three becomes negative three and one. No, wait a minute. One, three, no, it's not just flipping. Negative, did I, did I say this incorrectly? Uh, three, negative one and three. No, 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 actually that's just here, interesting. But we're probably not going to have to think about that anyways. Let's just think about whether that holds here as well. No, that doesn't hold here as well. So, yeah, so for negatives, we can't just flip them. I assume, however, we can flip them up here when we're, when we're in positive numbers for both coordinates. So <clears throat> I think what we're going to do is we're going to just use, uh, we're going to, uh, let's let's think about this. We're going we're gonna to identify the inverse function. In other words, actually just flip the coordinates and then derive this point from this point. And then we have these two points. And then we're just going to take these two points and reflect them over y, right? And reflect them over x. And then reflect one of these two that are reflected over y uh, or x over the remaining axis and get these, these points, right? And that should sort of be enough to derive every point. And in my mind, that seems like a way of actually describing what, what's going on using words and using functions that we can actually name as opposed to just uh, sort of translating a bunch of numbers or, or transforming a bunch of numbers, I should say. So let's just dive into the code and let's, let's see if we can do that. Or, uh, so let's see, let's jump into Vim, let's open up a file, let's call it main.js. And let's, let's just experiment, right? Let's say that we have uh, maybe like, so we need some kind of point structure, right? So, or let's, let's, so let's just implicitly assume that, or let's assume that that is something like this. Let's, let's call it P. Let's say that that's our, our point that we're experimenting with now. Let's say that that has the X value. Let's, let's use this as an example that we talked about before. It has an X value of uh, one and a uh, Y value of Three. Let me put that on one line, actually. Okay, let me just map a keystroke to uh, running this file through Node so I can actually execute this code. Okay, uh, then what? Then we're going to have a function. So, so we're going to have a function that gives us the, uh, gives us the, the, let's say, I mean, again, like I don't really know what the terminology is here, but let me just say invert, let's say. So what that so so when so when it gives so we <laughs> sorry when we give it one three we want to get three one back right that's sort of the test case for us so so let's just try this out right let's say let's define a function that we call invert uh, and then let's say that when given some point it should simply return uh, a new point where x is the the other point's y value and where y is the other point's x value like so, right? And then let's just try that out. So let's do console log invert on P. Let me actually put this on one line. And let me, before I do that, let me also just console log P so we can see that first. Oops, let's save and let's run that. Uh, unexpected token. So I have, <laughs> my font size is way too big. Uh, yeah, sorry, okay, so because of this syntax, I have to use a parenthesis here, my bad. Let's run that again. Yeah, and here you can see, okay, so we start with one three but then we inverted the point and then we have three one. Of course, this is not actually correct, right? Because 
what I'm trying to express is that if we have the point negative 1 and then 3, then we should get back the point negative 3 and then uh, uh, 1. So actually it's a bit more complex, right? And, and probably there's a sensible way of defining the uh, this inverse function <laughs> for for those of you who are better at math than than I am actually sorry let me full screen this this terminal now because I, I don't think we we need the blog post for, for now um, but I guess I mean one way to think about this is that you you move over the uh, the number the absolute representation of the number but you keep whether it's negative or not here so I guess then it's like Let's just see if we can actually express that as well, because then we have sort of a more general function. Because then it's like negative three, or I mean, let's let's think about this. So three should yield no, uh, one and three should yield sorry negative one and three should yield negative three. Uh, yeah, but this kind of makes no. I mean, yeah. Okay, sorry. This is. I mean, this is okay. Let's do that in the end. Let's let's do that in the end because I think otherwise I'm just gonna make this tutorial come to a strong or tutorial. Sorry, now we're just hacking, right? It's a coding challenge. So uh, let me let me just say to do uh, does not work on negative numbers. Numbers. Okay, and then let's come back to that, right? But n now we have this invert function. Let, let's let's solve the other ones. So then we also have this uh, translate translate over right? or sorry not translate over what do we call it Ah, reflect reflect and we have reflect over x and we have reflect over y let's see if we can figure out a way to to make turn these functions into the same function later and then sort of parameterize the idea of x and y maybe we can maybe we can't right so how would you reflect over over x let's think about that so let's look at this or actually let's say reflect over or yeah let's start with it reflect over x so that means uh, when you have this point, you should get this point. So when you have 1 and 3, you should get 1 and negative 3. And if you have this point, 3, 1, then you should get 3 and negative 1. So you can notice that just means that we're, we're negating the y. That's how we're reflecting over x. Let me see if I'm, I'm using the correct terminology here. So reflections, reflecting over the x-axis, yeah, that's what we're expressing, right? And here you can actually, I mean, here you can actually see it. The rule for reflection over the x-axis is given the pair x1, uh, xy, you get x and negative y, right? So the implementation for that is super simple. We're just saying to reflect over y, that means you get back the, let me just line these up, you get the same, um, the same x value, p dot x, but for y, you get uh, negative p dot y, oops, like so. Uh, maybe let's do that, line everything up, okay? Uh, and then to reflect over y, how do we do that, right? So then we're reflecting from here to here. So that means 1, 3 should become negative 1, 3. And 3, 1 should become negative 3, 1. So that just means we're negating the x value. So so then that means we should say reflecting over y means that we're taking uh, the... Uh, we're negating the x value, the old x value, oops, p dot x. And then we're just keeping uh, the y value. P dot y, and of course, like I, of course, I could have used sort of spread syntax or something like that to to reuse the same, uh, to not have to express the variables that are the same. But you know, I think this is fairly clear to do it this way. Um, yeah, let's maybe not. No, let's express it this way. That's fine. Okay, so yeah, no, sorry, the grouping looks uh, uh, it messes up my head. I think we should maybe do it this way. Sorry, indentation, my god. So like this, maybe? Something like that. Okay, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so now we have invert, and we have reflect over x, and we have reflect over y, right? And the rest, oh, sorry, let's just make sure that this works, right? So uh, let's make the inverse of that point, and then uh, reflect that point, reflect over x, that particular point, and reflect over y that particular point and let's let's just make sure these work right so this is the original point one three and then we uh, flip the point so then we have three one right that's fine then we reflect over uh, x right downwards and then we get 
uh, 1 and negative 3. So we're negating the y number or the, the y value. And then we're, f we're uh, flip, uh, tr uh, <laughs> reflecting over, uh, over the y axis. So in, in this direction, then that means that we get negative 1 for x and the same number 3 as, as, um, uh, as y. So we're just we're negating the, uh, the x value. And so, so now, maybe let's do this, right? For, for the sake of like, trying to make this as simple as possible. Let's just, let's try to express these points one by one, right? So let's start here and then let's go sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Or actually, let's say this is point one, uh, or maybe we should actually call it point zero. But, uh, but let's say, let's say this is point one, right? So we start with point one. This is an example, right? Uh, and then we want to do what? Let, let's say, first we have point one. And then we want to somehow transform that in order to turn it into all of the different points. So the first one we know how to do, that's just invert. So we begin by inverting P1. Okay, then what? Then <clears throat> we need to, so what's the next point, right? Then it's this point. Well, this point is actually just the inverted reflection over X, right? Or sorry, the other way around, the, the X reflected inverse. Right, because it's like think about composition. It's like uh, uh, <laughs> reflection uh, x reflect. Let me call it x reflect. Um, it's x reflect after uh, inverse. Sorry, I got quiet because let's actually let's actually rename them like that. Let's say x reflect and y reflect. Right, so it's it's a bit easier to to talk about the functions because now they're sort of expressed as verbs. So we can invert P1. So, so let's do that, right? So we reflect, or sorry, we X reflect after having inverted P1. So let's check that out, right? We're expecting to get, so we start at, <laughs> I have too few hands. We're starting at 1, 3, right? And then I'm just going downwards. We're starting at 1, 3, and then we're expecting to get 3, 1, which is what we get. Cool, okay? And then we're expecting to get 3, negative 1, which is what we get. Which is good. Okay, so so good progress, right? Then we need this point. So that's one negative three. And let's think about that in terms of the sort of primitives that we've built up now. Well that ah, if we had a working version of our reflection, uh, right? Remember how I said a to-do note for reflect. So if we did if we went back and fixed that, that means we could just go from this point and turn it into this point. And that would actually be a more interesting because then like a more interesting way of doing it, I would, I would say, because then we could just sort of take the take one point and then convert that into the next point and then take that point and turn that into the next point. And we could just sort of traverse the whole lap, right? That would actually be pretty cool, pretty cool. But let, let's not do that now. Let's let's save some. Let, let, let's see if we have some time in the end and let's figure that out then. So, uh, but how, how's another? What's another way we could get this? Well, another way we could get this is just to take the original point and reflect that over X. Right, pretty simple, right? So, so let's let's do that. So, uh, what we could do then is we could just say console log x reflect the original p one. Let's try that out. Let's see if we get what we expect. We expected one negative three, and we did get one negative three. So, so we're on good, like good progress, man. And then this point, I mean, here you can trivially see that's just a that's just a y reflection of the point that we now have. Is there an easier implementation immediately that we, that we can think of? I mean, clearly, yes, you could think about this as like the, like this is the negation of that point, actually. Let's think about that. Does that always hold? Is, is this the negation of that point? Yeah, that's actually the negation of that point. So this is probably like a mathematical concept that's, that's called something, and, and we, could, we could probably just use that. Hmm, I wonder if that's actually called the inverse. This is now a quick, quick Googling. So inverse point, let's, let's try to see Wikipedia, right? Uh, but that's oof. inversion circle, too much complexity. This is just totally stuff that I don't know, right? Uh, I think, I mean, I was at the, uh, I did see something along these lines before. So let's just quickly see. So invert 
Oh, no, point in ver... Mm -hmm. No, point... Yes, yes, yes. No, but this is it, right? Point reflection. So uh, inversion in a point or inversion through a point or central inversion is a type of isom isometry. I isometry? Isometry, whatever. Um, uh, an object, blah, 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 blah. Possess central symmetry. Wow, this is. I should really scale back on the amount of math that I try to put in these videos. <laughs> okay, or or live stream so you could point me into the correct directions. Uh, a point reflection into. But I mean, I would just like looking at this picture. I would assume that that's like exactly what we're talking about, right? Because it's like. Uh, it's uh, like if you think about the F, right? We're flipping over X and we're flipping over Y. Aha! Sometimes I just behave like a moron, right? That's what we're doing, right? We're reflecting over X and we're reflecting over Y. Hmm. So this should just be called reflection. Right, 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 right. Okay, so we have reflect, uh, which when given a point does, let's say, Y reflect after it does X reflect uh, on the point, right? Of course, we could implement that directly, right? By just saying it's it's just the, the inverse of x and the inverse of y. So, I mean, you, you do as you please, right? But I'm just emphasizing here that this it's interesting to think about how we can build that up from smaller functions. And now I don't actually have a composition operator, but if we had a composition operator, let's say, so let's maybe build that as well, right? So let's say, so again, functional programming, if you've been watching my other functional programming videos. So let's say we have a, a compose function that uh, when given some f and some g gives you back a, uh, uh, sorry, an f, and, yeah, it gives you back a function that accepts an x, and then when given that x, it calls f uh, on the result of calling g on x, right? So if we had the, uh, a compose operator, we could also define reflect something like this. We could say, we don't even have to say it takes p, we just have to say it, it composes y reflect and x reflect, right? That's, that's also an implementation of, of uh, reflect then. Let's actually just make sure that that works. Uh, Mm, let's keep the compose actually. So let, let's let, let's uh, see if that works. So then let's also console log reflect of uh, p1. And let's console log that. So now we get negative one, negative three, which is exactly the point we were looking for, right? This this last one that we're looking at here, right? And just to prove it, I mean negative one, negative three. You could also of course use this other implementation. Const reflect is equal to uh, y reflect. Uh, over x reflect, oops, over uh, the the p. Right now, I forgot to take a p as an argument, but like so, right? Oops. And then let's run that, and you can see that works as well, right? But let's let's use the compose version. This is again like functional programming. I guess I guess I also like the reason I'm doing that is is not that it's necessarily something that I would do if I'm actually writing an application, but just in order to put us into this state of mind to think about building more complex functions from uh, previously known functions, so that it's uh, it's um, so that we can talk about these in terms of their names, right? Because then, like here, it's sort of semantically evident that reflection is somehow. Uh, and an, an, uh, a, a comp a, not a composition, but like it's yeah. But I mean, it is a composition, right? It's it's a it's an aggregate. It's something that's more complex than the than the primitive ideas of y reflection and x reflection. So so the idea of reflection can be built up in terms of y reflection and x reflection. Again, apologies if I'm actually using incorrect ver words here. Um, but so so that's pretty cool, right? So then we have that point. Let's let's do the next point. So the next point is this point. Again, if we had a proper uh, implementation of inverse or of invert, then uh, we could uh, we could uh, define this new point as the the uh, the invert of this point. So it's it's the composition of uh, reflect and invert, right? It's it's like reflect. Uh, sorry, uh, invert and reflect, right? It's it's invert after you do reflect. So first we reflect to get here, and then we do invert to get here. But what's another way of doing that? Let's think about this. So, mm -hmm, it's actually like, since our invert doesn't work, it's actually a bit tricky, right? Because we have to get, yeah, this is, so, so we should really fix our invert function, right? Because this is going to be really messy. Because, but another way of getting there is first going here, right? That we can do. 
and then we can get here, and then we can get here. So that's another way of doing that. We could say, well, okay, you have this point, and if you, uh, if you reflect, you get here. And if you then, uh, if you then, uh, uh, the, no, sorry, not reflect. <laughs> if, you, if you invert, you get here. And then if you X reflect, you get, uh, if you Y reflect, you get here. And then if you X reflect, you get here. So, so what are we saying? We're saying first, uh, X, first X reflect, sorry, first invert, then, uh, so invert, Y reflect, invert X reflect, and then Y reflect. My goodness. Okay, okay. Uh, let's just say, uh, no, we, we do it immediately. So console log uh, invert, and then X reflect. No, Y reflect. Why was I saying incorrectly? I, I'm so confused. We want to do invert, and then Y reflect, and then X reflect, and pass the P1. Okay, let's let's try that out. Then we get negative three, negative one, which is actually what we were looking for. We were here, and then we got here, right? So it's like we're saying, do first invert the point, then reflect it over the y-axis, and then reflect it over the x-axis. And of course, this could be expressed as a composition as well. We could probably do, let's think about this. We could do something like this. Uh, we compose, uh, so now it's tricky because I have, let, let me actually define pipe which is so compose is uh, right to left composition. So first you run it. So when you give it, when you give two functions f and g. By the way, if composition doesn't make any sense to you, do check out my other videos. Right, I have lots of videos on uh, Ramda, for example. Uh, so probably even my introduction to Ramda video would make a lot of sense if you are not familiar with composition, uh, and if you're not sort of familiar with partial application or currying. Those are let me just those are really, 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 really useful concepts, right? So it's definitely worth to learn them, definitely. So so do spend some time on learning them. But uh, feel free to stick around in this video, right? But if you do feel like that is confusing, check out my other videos. I, I like look for words such as curry, uh, currying, curry, um, partial application, and composition, and pipe, right? All those four things, it's important things to learn. So if we define pipe, which is then uh, left to right composition, that means we will apply F before we apply G, and then we'll pass some X, that means we apply G uh, on the application of F on X, right? Notice how these are sort of um, done in the opposite orders. So in the top, the top one is uh, right to left composition, and the bottom one is, is uh, left to right composition. So the top one can be read as F after G, and the, the bottom one can be uh, read as um, F, why it's F followed by G. There's must be a better way of saying it uh, after and before, right? So F before G, right? No, that's a better way of saying it. So either F after G or F before G, right? Compose and pipe respectively. So we could probably say something like that then. So we could define this, uh, the function that we have here on line 19 or the expression that we have on line 19. We could probably express that as piping first uh, invert First, yeah, you you pipe the value first through invert, and then you pipe it through the pipe uh, of y reflect and then x reflect, right? And then we pass p1. So this should give us the same value. Yeah, and it does give us the same value. So if this has a useful name, right? If if going from here to here can somehow be given a useful name, then we could save that into a function. We could save this pipe into a function, and then we could just keep passing variables to that. But I don't really know what to call that function. So, so like, let's, let's not do that, right? Um, so okay, so that's that one. Okay, now we have to define this point, I, I have to let the cat back in again, but think about how to define this point. All right, I guess you probably figured it out, right? I mean, if we have, uh, we, we start from this point and we're trying to get to this point. So since, again, since our, uh, our invert function doesn't really work as we would expect it, 
uh, you can get to that you can get to that point by first inverting uh, and then uh, getting and then reflecting over y, right? So it's the composition of uh, ref uh, y reflect and invert, or the piping of invert and and uh, y reflect. So maybe I should start to say left le left and right composition instead. So it's the it's the left to right composition of uh, invert and then uh, y reflect. Um, so so yeah, let's let's just do that, right? So we just console log. What did we say? First invert, and then uh, y reflect. That's what I said, right? Yeah, first invert. No, sorry, yeah, sorry, the other way around. So y reflect after invert, uh, and then we pass p1. Okay, let's save that and let's run this. Then we get negative three one. Let's see if that's correct. Negative. Wait, which one were we building? The last one we had was negative three, negative one. That's this one. But now we got. Yeah, sorry. Okay, correct. Negative three and then one. Yeah, so it's the correct point. And then final point, right, is this one. And that's super easy because it's just y reflect, right? So the last point is this. Console log uh, y reflect of p one. Let's save that and let's look at that. That's negative one and three. That's the correct point. Cool. Okay. So now I guess let's let's try to sort of let's try to figure out a, a more neat way of expressing this. So let's say uh, that you have uh, let's say that we have a function which is called something like all points, right? Or or maybe something more like uh, symmetrical. Uh, Let's let's call it symmetricals. Maybe that's actually a mathematical name. If that if it is that, I, I apologize, right? Uh, but let's say that symmetricals is a function that takes some point. Let's call it p. So it's, it's a bit silly that I called it p1 before, and then just returns uh, an array of points, uh, which are all these points that we just created, right? So let me just copy these console logs and put them inside of this array, and then we're going to remove all the console logs, right? So let me remove all the console log statements. Uh, let's rem uh, delete the parentheses here. Oops. So I love Vim, right? But these kinds of actions are just super much easier in uh, <laughs> in text editors that have uh, multiple cursors, such as uh, Sublime Text. Now you can do a bit of multiple cursor in Vim, but it's like I don't really like it as much as I do in Sublime Text, so I tend to definitely jump into Sublime Text to do these kinds of tasks, like multiple cursors. Man, that that stuff is seriously powerful. Okay, anyways, so so these are the let's see one two three four five six seven eight points, which makes sense. From the beginning, we said we wanted eight points, right? So these are the eight points that we derive. Let me make that full screen again. That we derive from the original point. Right. So let's just see if that still makes sense. So let's say, okay, we st we we start with uh, the point P. Oh wait, I actually deleted the point P. So so here we have uh, a uh, let's say let's call it just point. Right. So we have the variable point, and then we're gonna say, okay, console log point just to show the point first. Let me add a bunch of empty lines here. Let me and then we, whoops, white space. Uh, and then we add, we console log just some dividing stuff, and then we console log uh, the symmetricals of point. Actually, maybe instead of symmetricals, uh, uh, symmetric. We should we we should call it derivations. Oh, but derivations is actually a a, a, a concept in in um, mathematics. But uh, okay, so pff, um, derived points. Let's say right derived points or maybe even pattern let's let's call it that right let's call it pattern so we derive some pattern which makes sense right we're de deriving some pattern in a in a in a uh, coordinate system in a cartesian coordinate system from a, a given point so let's save that and let's run it we're expecting to get yeah okay we got an error but we were expecting to get the same thing as as we had before uh, the error is of course that i renamed the variable here right and when we constructed the function i named the variable p instead of p1 so i actually have to change p1 here to to p in all of these instances like so okay let's save that and let's run and now you can see, so now I can't really see the old stuff. We have, we have the old stuff up here, right? But what we can do is we can compare this to our paper, right? So let's cycle through here. So the original point was 1, 3, and then, right, or sorry, the original point here is 1, 3, 1, 3, and then we get 3, 1, makes sense. 
uh, 3, negative 1, and then 1, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, 1, and then negative 1, 3, right? Which all makes sense, and of course, which was kind of expected, right? Because these points, uh, I mean, the only thing we did now was that we wrapped this stuff in a function, right? So think about how we can further increase the, the, uh, the let's say, level of abstraction in terms of functional programming now, right? I want to somehow sort of get, do, get, get rid of this uh, constant application of P, right? It's like, if you think about it, somehow what we're just doing is that we're, we're passing in this P, and then we have this array of functions, like we have this array of transformations, and we're just applying p, where we're applying all these transformations to p. So we're, it's sort of like we're running through p through a a um, a a bunch of transformations, right? The reason I'm saying that is that, like, if you think about it, if you think about sort of how you could uh, how change could happen in the future, and if you think about what maybe what we're modeling is not like a, a mandala maker, but but something more complex, uh, then then maybe you would want to introduce more points, right? So like now we're turning a single point into eight points, but what if in the future you would want to turn it into like sixteen points, right? And so so yeah, I mean here of course you would just put the transformations here, but we could make it even simpler by by not just putting in the p here. What I mean is, what if we had something like this? What if we had a function, let's say uh, make pattern, uh, make pattern uh, that takes uh, some uh, some let's say x's, and these x's every x here is is a a transformation function, or actually let me just call it call them f's instead, right? F's, <laughs> so f's for like functions. Uh, and what we want to return is that we want to return a new function that when given this p variable constructs an array or takes this p variable and runs and runs it through every item in this in this list so so actually this is just like a map operation right it's like we're mapping over the f's and then what let's think about this so every every so so like this right so everything contains a function every element is a function and we want to run that. Oh, okay, so actually what we have to do is this. Let's, let's rewrite this. What we want to do is we want to say make pattern, sorry for mixing different function syntaxes, is a, is a function that fir first takes some f's and then takes some x. Right? And this x is the p. Right? Uh, sorry, I have to let the cat in. Just, just think about how you would write this, this, uh, this mapper. So I think probably you just figured it out, right? But but what we're what we're gonna do, or what we're gonna need, is something like the I think it's known as the thrush operator. So something like this, right? Everything, every uh, every item in this array is a is a uh, um, is a function, and we just want to run that function through the value that we have, right? So wait, let's think about that. Is that actually Yes, it's it's. I think it's thrush, right? So thrush would be defined like this: uh, when given some x, and then a function. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, then it applies the function to the value. So that would mean that instead of defining it like this, we could also define it as fs dot map thrushing the thrushing of x. Right, but let's take one step at a time. Right, let's let's comment out thrush for now, and then let's like let's first make sure that that the thing that we're uh, the, the assumption that we have like in a in a simpler sense is working already. So let's uh, let's return this, and actually since it's pretty simple, let's not even have those um, uh, the curly braces, and let's just sort of implicitly return. So now we have this make pattern function. How do we use that? Well, to construct this this pattern function now. We can just use the make pattern function. So we say, uh, let's redefine pattern in terms of this, right? Let's move this stuff up, stuff up here, and then let's say, okay, const pattern is now defined as make pattern, right? It's a function that's the consequence of calling make pattern and passing in this array of transformations or transformation functions, and that's just 
this stuff, right? Let me delete, like copy that stuff and put it in here, but without applying them to P, right? So if I search for parenthesis P parenthesis, and then we delete that, aha, and now we have to introduce, now we have to write these as compositions. Okay, interesting. So I think, let's do this. Let's take one step at a time. Again, let's undo backwards back here where we actually have the pattern and let's rewrite these as compositions to make sure that we nail the composition before we introduce additional complexity. So this means, uh, let me rewrite one at a time. This one would be, this one would be uh, pipe, let me just write them as pipes, right? Uh, X reflect and then invert and then comma. Okay, this one is fine, this one is fine. Uh, and then this one would be, uh, oh, this is the one we wrote before as well, right? It's the piping of invert into the pipe of Y reflect followed by X reflect, right? So if you if you're in a language, if you're in, if you have a sort of variadic definition of pipe, then you could maybe express something like this instead, pipe, invert, and then y reflect, and then x reflect, right? And that's actually pretty trivial to define. But I mean, I'm sort of skipping that just to keep things a bit simple. So so you could pipe it like this, because our pipe uh, function is a function is a binary function that only takes two arguments. Uh, so this is why we sort of have to pipe into a pipe in order to to pipe uh, through three functions. Okay, but that's that one. And then this one, uh, no wait, was that the one I just did? <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's the one I did, right? Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness, yeah, okay, right, because that's the one I did, okay. This is why I wrote on the same line in order to not confuse myself. So this is uh, piping, uh, oh no, I did it backwards, did I not? So X reflect after invert and this is invert, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I did it incorrectly. Sorry, what I meant here was pipe, uh, invert, and then X reflect, my bad. And what I meant here, whoops, was what? Was uh, pipe X reflect into the pipe of Y reflect followed by invert, oops. And then this one is simply piping invert followed by uh, Y reflect. So maybe it would actually have been easier if I expressed it using right to left composition. So our compose operator rather than pipe because then the order would be exactly the same. Like this sort of transformation that I'm doing now would be more trivial. Uh, okay. And then I have, yeah, I have forgot to apply these things to P. So let's apply this function to P. And let's apply this function to P. Let's save that and let's now run this to see if this is sort of still uh, working, right? Because now we should be looking at exactly the same thing as before. And actually we can just, instead of looking at the paper, we can match between these two, right? So this thing is equal to this thing. And then three, one, three, one, three, negative one, three, negative one, one, negative three, one, negative three, negative one, three, negative one, three, negative three, negative one, negative three, negative one, negative three, one, negative three, one, negative one, three, negative one, three, right? So, so this, this seems to work fine. So our, our sort of conversion into using composition seems to work fine. Now, uh, there's one, like, like what we're going to do later is that we're going to uh, eliminate this, this application to, to P. So that means that here we're not, we're not going to be left with anything. So here we're also going to have to have a transformation function and that transformation function is just the identity function, right? X to X. So let's define the identity function as well. So let me just call that ID, right? So ID is a function that when given some X simply just returns that same value, right? And that's, that's the, that's the first function that we have here. ID applied to P comma, let's just see. That still works, right? One, three, and one, three. Sorry, I have to stop the cat. Okay, they're messing up the couch. My God, okay. Um, and now, what do we do? Well, now we go back to what we were doing before. We move this stuff from uh, this, this sort of explicit application inside of the pattern function into, ah, uh, oh, whoops, I deleted that code, let's undo, into this redefinition of pattern, right? We redefine pattern as uh, the, the, the application of make pattern onto an array of transformers. And the array of transformers we get by copying this stuff, pasting it here, and then removing 
whoops, and then removing all of these applications to P. So let's do that. Let's remove that, let's remove that, 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 and that, right? So now we have a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of, of transformation functions, right? And we run this array of transformation functions through the function make pattern, right? And this make pattern function is, is transforming uh, these um, is, is turning this into a single function that will give us an array where all of these uh, where, where at each particular index or where the function at each, part, each particular index has been applied to the uh, to the the, the 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 point that we passed it right because think about it make pattern returns a function right even if we give it like if, even if it is a function and we apply it to this this first array what we're going to get back is a function that expects the point the original point and then when we give it that original point it's going to give us back an array of values so hopefully now we should get the same output back oof but we don't of course because we always need suspense right okay so line 24 uh, why reflect on p so i've probably missed um, some kind of application to p yeah oof, sorry just missed one thing here okay Let's try that again. And now, hopefully that works. Now I can't see both of the stuff at the same time, but let me just eyeball, sorry, let me just eyeball whether these are the same. One, three, three, one, 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 negative three, one, negative three, negative, one, negative, three, one, and negative one, three. Yeah, super good, right? And those are the same. So, so, that makes sense. And actually, if you think about this, let's look at this for a moment. So the make pattern thing, oh, let's redefine that using the threshold operator, right? right? That's what we were, we were saying that we were going to do. So how do we do that? Let's put these back on two lines. So if we have the thrush operator, we could probably say that this is just the mapping of thrushing x or something like that. I don't know if that's terminologically correct to say. So let's, let's try to run that. Do we get the same thing? Uh, one three. Nah, 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 nah. Actually, what I should do. Yeah, what we should do is we should we should do this. We should redefine it. So I should say maybe that's the old make pattern, and then we redefine. Uh, so make pattern two. So I mean this is make pattern one, and then we define that as f's x fs dot map thrush uh, over x. I'm just like defining <laughs> this this the same thing again because what we could do then is we could say. Yikes, but then I have to do, okay, so then we have to abstract this, uh, this array into a bunch of transformations. So let's put these transformations into an array or into a variable, right? So let's move these transformations into a variable here. And then we can say, well, uh, pattern one is make pattern from these transformations, right? Or actually make pattern one from the transformations, uh, pattern one. And then pattern two is make pattern two whoops, from these transformations. And then you can apply pattern one to the point. We can apply pattern two to the point. And then we can check whether, and actually that's what we want to do, right? We want to check if, yeah, but let's print them also. Then we want to check uh, whether pattern one applied to the point is equal to uh, pattern no way, JavaScript. I can't do this in JavaScript, right? <laughs> How silly, right? Because I need, yeah, of course. Sorry, so yeah, that would have been interesting if we were in a language such as Haskell, for example, right? <laughs> where where uh, things are structurally equivalent rather than, like their, their structure equals or their value equals rather than reference equals. I actually have a, an interesting video on that in, in the context of the Ramda library. If you, if you search through my uh, set of videos uh, for Ramda and equality or Ramda and equals or something like that. And so, yeah, that was a stupid mistake on my part. Let's just check again, eyeball that these two things are equivalent. Again, like if you were wondering why that didn't work, it's of course because the two arrays, even though they might contain exactly the same stuff uh, in terms of the values, they're not, they're not pointing to the same location in memory. And that's why in JavaScript, you can't do something like that. So, uh, so yeah, let me remove all of this sort of one, two stuff. And let's just go back to a single to a single function. But it seems that what we were doing was working, right? So we can use the thrush, uh, the thrush operator. So or the thrush function. So I'm just saving that function instead. Let's just make sure that this prints as well. Yeah, and that seems to print fine. Okay, so now we've used thrush here. And can we simplify this further? Let's think about that const make pattern is we apply fs, and then x. So this is actually more like uh, if, yeah, so if we had the map as a function as a separate function, right, then this would be the the piping 
of uh, thrush of x yeah but then we need to take x yeah so okay so maybe here i wouldn't do it because it's a bit trickier because we have two arguments and like we need to first uh thrush x yeah i mean if we had x it's trivial right it's like if we didn't have if the function started with x then it's fine uh because then we could thrush x, but now, yeah, okay, so let's not think about that, right? So so you can definitely, so what I was thinking of is whether you can rewrite that as a point-free function. And uh, let me just, for the sake of completion, point-free function. A point-free function is like a function that doesn't explicitly take an argument. Uh, actually, it's called tacit tacit programming. This I didn't know. Uh, let's see if we have an example here. Yeah, so it's all in, it's all in Haskell, unfortunately, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like talking too much about this is going to be too tangential. Uh, but it's essentially, I mean, it, it's essentially what we did when we defined a compose here, for example, right? What we're saying is that reflect actually takes an argument, which is this P, but we don't have to define that P because we're, we're just saying that I want to compose a function and then I immediately want to apply that function to the, the argument P. So then we can just leave that argument uh, undefined because what we're getting back is a function that expects this p so then we don't have to mention p because it's like it's a function that accepts a variable or that accepts an argument and then we just take that argument and apply it to the function right it's um i'm thinking of can i can i say it in a more simple way um yeah i think if you if you're more interested in that definitely check out my ramda series if you have not already uh there's a lot of talk about about stuff like that in in that series so but point free functions right there's a there's a super interesting talk on youtube called the point free or die i highly recommend you check that out if, if you're interested in point free functions it's about sort of the trade-offs or how you can't how it's not necessarily a good idea to just uh, try to make everything point free again like maybe as as in this case um but yeah, okay, so so whew, we've been going almost at, in, in one hour, but let me let me try to make a few more simplifications if we can, and then maybe let's leave the visual stuff for tomorrow, and then we'll figure out the visual stuff tomorrow. Um, but so I'm still not entirely pleased, right? It's like, I think this function should be simpler, and also I think it should definitely not be called ma uh, make pattern, because this is way too, way, way, way too simple, right? So... Uh, because what we're just doing is that we're saying you have a list of transformations and then you you want to apply some x to that list of transformations, right? So, yeah, but I mean, at least uh, let's rename make pattern to transform. Uh, yeah, let's maybe... Oh, I think maybe Ramda has a function for something very similar and I'm trying to... Remember, let's actually let's super quickly look for that. So Ramda JS, let's jump into the docs, uh, and then yeah, documentation. Darn it, uh, documentation, and then I mean it has to be something like uh, many values or mult. I guess they would say multiple values. Nope, many values. No, sorry, not many values. Many functions. Yikes, multiple functions function if i could spell nope functions so if i just say functions and we'll we'll search for that and see if we can find something interesting let me make the font size a bit bigger whoops uh so functions add index applies a list of functions to a list of values that's not what we're looking for apply spec is not what we're looking for both is not clone is not compose compose, compose p uh no compose construct construct no, converge, not really, actually. No, wait, 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 is it? No, because we don't want to converge. Yeah, I mean, we want to converge on just making it an array. Hmm, sorry, I understand that this is not uh, very useful. I just wanted to see if, if they actually have, there definitely should be something like this. Hmm. Yeah, you could also maybe, yeah, you can maybe think about it as reduce. Yeah, anyways, let's drop that. Yeah, so now I went the whole lap. Let's let's drop that. Um, no, wait, here, use with. Accepts a function and a list of transformer functions and returns a new curried function. What's the first function? MathPal 
transformer functions and then those are no yeah i mean so so what we have is more trivial yeah anyways let's drop that right <laughs> that's that's uh, that's a more complex scenario because then you also have one additional transformation function through which you want to run all your um all the functions that you've uh, all, all the values that you've produced in the in the mapping but but anyways let's maybe leave that for la for next time and if i if i uh, sort of figure something out or if you say something ingenious in the comments which would be highly appreciated then then we can incorporate that um but most probably again this should uh, this should be sort of a known concept um yeah so instead of trans yeah okay so that that could be called transform right so then we don't really have to define this pattern variable i guess we could just say that you define a uh, transformation function by saying transform and passing the transformations and that gives you a transformation function on the fly and then you can pass the point right is there anything else we can remove we should put thrush back up here in sort of the let's say uh, general purpose functions and then yeah then we have a to do on this one right to do this we should figure out tomorrow uh, so let's say negatives and these are let's say uh, Cartesian functions or let's say point transformation functions point transformations uh, point transformers if I could spell and then transform here is this I mean I'll, I'll move this up to general purpose functions right because that's actually extremely general in some sense right it's like it's just it takes a list of functions whoops <laughs> it takes a list of functions and it just uh, runs the value that you pass through all of those through all of those functions and gives you an array back of values so now I mean again like you can see functional programming right it's like now I'm defining these general purpose functions, but like if you are in, um, but these are very, very trivial, right? And very, very, very reusable because they're super, super high level. So these would maybe go into like a base file that's just like, is that's defined everywhere. And then we have these, these point transformers, right? And these are sort of our actual like business logic. Really, right? This, this is sort of, or actually, maybe maybe these aren't really our business logic either. Sorry, actually, these are actually just mathematical concepts. So this we would put sort of in a in a math library and give them name. And where is our business logic? Well, our business logic is just here, right? This this is actually just our business logic. We're saying, I want to have a transformer that's based on these transformations. That one line is our our business logic, of course. I mean, coupled with this transformation. So so if you would if you would inline that right maybe we would inline it like this instead so we would say that transformer uh, is calling transform is the result of calling transform and passing these transformations right but yeah let's let's maybe put the yeah so so okay so let's go back to this thing where we had it like this where we say uh let's say let's say that we get a transformer by uh, by calling transform on our transformations right now this actually starts to like the language is sort of starting to make sense right it's like we're defining a bunch of transformations and then we're saying let's construct a transformer that uh, is the result of calling transform on the transformation which gives us then a, a function that expects a, a new point and then when we pass it a point such as this point x1 uh, y3 then we get back a, an array of a bunch of points right and these are sort of the points that we want to draw and then and then we just do this again right we we apply again and then we will line to those second points from the first point right so let's say that that was this was the first location that the user sort of put the put the pen at and then maybe the next location is this uh two and four right let's say two and five let's run that and then we would line from these first points to these these second uh, a list of points right such that the the zeroth point of the first array would line be, uh, we would draw a line from the from the point at index zero in the first array to the point at index zero in the second array and the first to the first and the and the second to the second and so forth right so and and then we would just keep doing that we would just listen to 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 wherever the mouse is 
and then we we will just we will just draw. So then it seems it to me it seems like the problem would be somewhat trivial from here, right? It's just a matter of figuring out. I mean, I shouldn't say trivial because actually, like in some sense, this was the trivial part, and, and then figuring out how canvases and all that super specific HTML stuff that's probably a lot more tricky. <laughs> but but um, but this in my mind seems like when you're working with applications getting this stuff right that we talked about now this seems like the really really crucial part because this is the 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 point where you separate uh business logic from from general purpose reusable functions right because like you don't want to mix the idea of compose with your business logic because that just makes your business logic more complex right and you don't want to mix sort of this let's say uh, the idea of an inverse or the idea of a reflection with your business logic, right? You sort of just want to name that concept so so that it's uh, like reflect is a function that's defined on its own and it's, and it's testable on its own, and then you just use that function reflect, right? So if if reflect is is uh, if you get re so maybe I should say it this way, so that you can't get reflect wrong in like ten places, you can only get it wrong in one place, which will of course cause every place to be wrong. But then at least you only have one place to fix it, right? Instead of having sort of like three places to fix it, but you don't necessarily know that it's wrong there because like in seven other places it actually works, right? So so this is really the this is really a, a sort of separation of concerns. Uh, point right. We have to identify what is very general and what is business logic specific. But okay. Anyways, now I'm ranting. Hopefully this was interesting. Let me, let me know what you think about this format and whether I should change anything in in future in future videos because I would really like to to try out doing a bit more of sort of code challenges and I would love to 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 hear if you have any suggestions of things that we could do uh, in the future. Like. Uh, like just ask me to to try out something and then uh, I'll try and figure out how, how to do that. Of course, we're not at all done yet because we need to get to this point, right? To like clearly, uh, I spent a lot of time talking about the sort of theoreticals, but we need to get to the point that, sorry, I can't remember her name now, but we'll, we'll check it. Uh, we need to get to the point that, that she got, which is here, actually, ah, Hagar is, is her name. So we need to get to this point where we can actually draw like this, right? And we're not here at all, right? But we've sort of, we've sort of solved the, the, in my mind, key components of doing that. Like we've solved the business logic end of doing that. Now we just sort of have to uh, pile or, or, or pour this pour this solution into a, a web browser, right? And that's what we're going to do next time. So be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss that if you're not subscribed. Let me know what you think about this. Ask in the questions if you have any comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.